Hello, my name is Doug. This is my biggest idea ever because it covers the entire universe. It is called the multi-centered universe. And let me define it in four statements. I am not the center of the universe. I am the center of my universe. You are the center of your universe. In the multi-centered universe, every observer of the universe, like you and me, is the center of their own universe, yours and mine. The birth of this idea came from my non-standard view of number theory. Start with the standard understanding of basic number theory. The real number line hung above the blackboard in second grade. A solitary zero was dead center with positive numbers on the right and negative numbers on the left. Arrows pointed to positive and negative infinity. Now there's another important kind of number, complex numbers. A complex number is one number that has two parts, a real part and an imaginary part. Complex numbers can add, subtract, multiply, and divide with other complex numbers, and the result remains a complex number. Complex numbers are both deeply similar to real numbers and deeply different. Deeply similar because every real number lives inside of complex numbers. Deeply different because there's not one way to order them all. Complex numbers can be visualized using the complex plane. There are now two number lines that share zero. The two number lines are different because they're at right angles to each other. And that is the approach to very basic number theory. I'm going to discuss space-time numbers. But the phrase space-time numbers is not used by mathematicians. The official name is Quaternions, and uh, I own Quaternions.com, full disclosure. Space-time numbers are Quaternions in every detail. Now, I've worked a long time to try and understand what a Quaternion actually is. And this talk is kind of a test if understanding what a Quaternion may be could be aided with a better name, space-time numbers. The time part is the real numbers. And then there are three space parts that are three imaginary numbers. Now, space-time numbers are deeply similar to real and complex numbers because they contained all the real and complex numbers inside of them. No exceptions. Space-time numbers are also deeply different because sometimes order matters. And that sometimes is actually essential because most of physics is done when space-time numbers point the same way in space. And when that happens, the order of space-time numbers doesn't matter. Now, I actually spent several months <laughs> thinking about a particular simple space-time number zero, 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 zero. The name for that number is here dash now. The space part dash the time part. Now is the first zero, neither the past nor the future. Here is the last three zeros, neither left nor right, up nor down, not forward, not back. Zen Buddhists take here now as a deeply central idea in their outlook. Now, I haven't actually studied Zen Buddhism. In my Unitarian Church, there was a sermon called An Appreciation for Zen Buddhism on December 6, 2020 by Reverend Laura Hoke. That stir service started with a quote from Thich Nhat Hanh, a Vietnamese Zen Buddhist that I will now read in full. 
To return to the present is to be in contact with life. Life can be found only in the present moment because the past no longer is and the future is yet to come. Buddhahood, liberation, awakening, peace, joy, and happiness can only be found in the present moment. Our appointment with life is in the present moment. Our place for this appointment is right here in this very place. Our appointment with the Buddha, with liberation, with happiness, is here and now. We should not miss this appointment. Thich Nhat Hanh unfortunately died recently, but no doubt his lineage of Zen Buddhism continues here and now. I have to remain silent about the Buddhahood. I kind of don't get it. <laughs> uh, I can translate some of that statement directly into space-time number math. My life is permanently transient. I must remain here now for two reasons. Zero, 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 zero plus zero, 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 zero equals zero, 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 zero here now. And also zero, 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 zero times zero, 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 zero equals zero, 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 zero here now. In math jargon, this is called a zero ring. And uh, mathematicians do not make a big deal of it. <laughs> Again, I'm going to change the label in the hope of finding meaning. I am going to call this the observer's ring. From here now, 0000, zero, zero, zero only I will observe my universe. And there is also your here now where you can observe your universe. Observers collect signals. And here's another equally important number. Here past 1000. Zero, zero, zero. The three zeros at the end say it is my here. The past is a positive number. Observers collect the here past. The key equation for the here past is 1000. Zero, zero, zero times one zero 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 equals one zero 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 the here past. My past persists and cannot be altered by anything ever. <laughs> Which has been my observation. But how big is that one? Well it really depends on what is being observed. For the last minute, it's like 60 seconds. For my genome, it's been about 60 years. And for the hydrogen in my body, it's about 13.6 billion years, mostly. My number for you now is 0100. Now is the first zero, and you are not here, so you don't get the final three zeros. I cannot see you as a zero. <laughs> now, you now squared equals minus one zero zero zero. Future here, because you send photons from your here now that arrive to my future here. And a bunch of effort would be required to figure out the direction of that one. Now, what is the visualization of space-time numbers? Well, let's start with time. Uh, except that time doesn't really have a look. <laughs> there are probably uh, Zen Buddhist riddles about this sort of thing. So let's just close our eyes and I'll kill the video. Great. Now, by the Western tradition, 
this here now counts as the farthest in the past. And this here now, a little bit less so. And I will arbitrarily define the solitary zero time as when I clap my hands that you can't see. <laughs> These here now moments are also past times relative to that future clap whenever it happens. So wait for it. Ah, that was zero. These here now moments are counted as the future. This here now is further into the future. And I could go on like this for a billion years, but the file would be too big to upload, so I will stop. Welcome back. <laughs> now, work with one dimension of space as well as time. You get to see something, uh, but it's not very much. My camera is the observer, not me, because I don't want you to get that close to my optic nerve. <laughs> We will have to have two zeros, one for time, a clap, and one for space, which is actually at the camera sensor surface. And we cannot be negative in time. That's the future. It has yet to arrive. We cannot be in negative space. It is beyond where we can see. It is on the other side of the camera sensor. Now, negative numbers are powerful and useful and just a little bit out of immediate reach. I mean, I'm never going to see the backside of my eyeball, although it most certainly exists. Now, on to full space-time numbers. Uh, it looks like what you're looking at right here now. It is the space-time number view from my video camera. And if you want to follow the Western tradition and define a zero, clap, and that will be the time part of zero, and the, the space part of zero will be the sensor for the camera. The real number line and the complex plane I think of as true but not valid. They're not wrong. They are just not right enough. Reflections around the zero time should look different than reflections around the imaginaries of zero space. And those reflections are visually identical in the complex plane, even though the real and imaginary numbers are deeply different. With space-time numbers, reflections around time require that you remember this happened, then that, then zero, then this, then that. Reflections in space are mirrors. One sees two things, and the two things always look different from one going thing going in reverse. Now, this is a battle between the way West, the Western math tradition uses a singular arbitrarily assigned zero and the idea of accepting multiple zeros that appeared in the East. And I will enjoy my here now hoping for a tectonic shift from West to East. So let me just add a coda. The multi-centered universe has nothing to do with the multiverse. The multiverse was born out of frustration with understanding quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics, as practiced today, uses complex numbers, the ones that look like this. And this works algebraically, uh, rather brilliantly as a matter of fact, but their tools are necessarily too small to map to s the space-time universe we live in. It is my opinion that all of quantum mechanics has to be rewritten with point one way space-time numbers and space-time number series. Those are not exactly the same thing. They have in, in very important technical differences. And this is going to be an epic battle uh, to be fought on another day. But I will include a link to explain my efforts uh, to explain quantum mechanics in the notes below. But thank you for your space time. Thank you.